the pause that refreshes. I've been trying to frame it that way. Is that what this is? I mean, we've seen this a couple times already in this otherwise downtrending market. And remember, the, the rally that we saw from the June low to the August high took two months. Mm -hmm. And then the downtrend from that August high to the October low took another two months. We're only a little bit more than a month into this. Unfortunately, I do think that this is another bear market rally. So we're still in a downtrending market, yes. as to use your words. Yes. And look, we talk about seasonality a ton at this time in the year. We do. And I think it has some predictive power. But in an environment like this, I don't think the regular seasons do have predictive power. But what you can look at is actually more of a unique take on seasonality. A lot of times you see these big momentum shifts mm -hmm. or momentum reversals in October and November, and we've seen that this time. So we had the low on October 12th, and we've gotten these high volatility stocks that have really outperformed since then, which is different than what we saw earlier in the year. Then usually what happens, though, is in December, it goes back to what it's been, back to the status quo, back to that trend. So you could see a sell volatility environment again in December. Assuming the Fed doesn't surprise us in any way, I don't think they're going to surprise us necessarily with the move itself of 50, which seems right. to be well telegraphed, yeah. or at least at the stages of, of being telegraphed. Yep. Um, assuming the rhetoric doesn't upset anybody. Is that good enough for the Santa Claus rally to, to take hold and maybe cross into the beginning part of the year? The yeah, year? Look, it, it could. And, and we, we kind of obsess over these levels of failure points on the S&P, right? Everybody's talking about 4,100 or so on the S&P. 4,120, Mark Newton, who just you know, as, got off the set a few minutes ago. Right, right. And as that being the possible failure point, we've failed at the 200-day moving average a couple times already this year. I would tell people, look at the VIX, too, and look at the levels that it's trading at right now or that it's, it's at right now where we're trading. We're approaching 20 again. And there have been a couple other times this year where the, the VIX has dropped below 20. Mm -hmm. It's been right around a bear market rally top, and it doesn't stay there very long. Then it spikes back up again. As we approach 20, we're going to probably also approach 4,100 on the S&P. That's no accident. Mm -hmm. And I don't know that we stay in either of those places very long. I don't necessarily believe in a Santa Claus rally, especially because I don't expect retail spending to be that strong this year. So I'm not too optimistic that we're going to see what we would normally see. Also, remember that in 2018, when we were in a hiking cycle, mm -hmm. the market corrected until December 24th, and the Fed had to pivot in order to bring it back out of those lows. We are in a hiking cycle now, and that should not be lost on investors. I'm, I'm curious as to why you don't think that holiday spending is going to be good based on what the retail numbers have been of late, maybe it's going to be the last burst, if you will, for the consumer before reality starts to hit on the other side of the year. Isn't that a fair assumption? I think, I think that is a fair assumption, but I don't know that it's going to be more than what we expect it to be. So, and, and who knows about the timing of this, but if you just think about what we've heard in the last month or so, yes, retail sales came in good for October, but that doesn't mean they're going to come in good for November or December. And as we continue to hear about layoffs, also that October data was pre all these layoff announcements. Consumers stop spending when they're worried about their jobs. I know, but a lot of the layoffs at this point have been centric to, you know, tech. Tech. They're contained in tech. Big tech. Right. Yes. Big, well, some little tech, too. But if that starts to bleed into other parts of the economy, and we do have other parts of the economy showing a lot of weakness, and we've got leading economic indicators that have been contracting all year, with the biggest month-over-month -month contraction just having been reported last week. So it, things are not pointing in a good direction, and with a yield curve as inverted as it is, we can't look six months out and say, things are going to be fine. No, it's Everything's going to be the overhang, better. right? It's going to be, yeah. that, it's going to be that, that storm cloud that's hanging over. Whether it, you know, rains on, on everybody, we just don't know. Maybe it'll pass over, but we're not going to know that for a while. So yep. in, in light of that, where do we hang out? Where, where are we supposed to hang out? Well, I, first of all, right now, again, rates are up, right? Cash is an asset class. And at a point where, you know, we've talked about the NASDAQ hitting its anniversary of its all-time high today. Yeah, it was today, you know, the intraday high, right? We're down. What are we down? Rest, More than 30, 34 percent, 30-something 30, yep. 30 percent? Yep. Well, and hopefully rest in peace, one of the worst years we've ever seen in the NASDAQ, right? But the valuations right now are still just below 25 times forward earnings on the NASDAQ. At the end of 2019, so pre-pandemic, they were about the same level. But at the end of 2019, the Fed funds rate was at 175 and falling. Today, the Fed funds rate's at 4% and rising. I think that's still too much. This is not a time that I would be putting money into tech 
or those high growth areas. I would still be hiding in the lower valued parts of the market, like financials, healthcare, and even in this environment, I think utilities is an okay place to be. Now, trading above the market on valuations, but below something like consumer staples. There are a lot of people who think some of these defensive plays are too expensive.